the guy that is holding me in the right Let's go ahead and bless you. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making it together in your name. Thank you for great Thank you for great There is no one like you. We glorify you. Be thou exalted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory be unto you. Father, we thank you. Your name. Wonderful is your name. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The first hymn we are going to sing is titled When I Behold the When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Amen. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross. See from his head. 
Jesus' name. Amen. Let us Amen. pray. King of glory, Lord of hosts, we thank you tonight once again. Our hearts are prepared already to receive from you. And we will pray tonight that your word will mix with faith in our hearts in Jesus' name. Will not just be hearers of your word tonight, but men and women that are willing to practice your word. And through your word tonight, you will transform us, you will prepare us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will confirm your word with signs following tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we thank you, we bless you once again. <coughs> be thou exalted, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want you to turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And the topic before us tonight is how to handle the enemy within. How to handle the enemy within. Most time we want to consider the enemy and we point our fingers. But if only we realize there is an enemy within. And that enemy within is more dangerous than the one without. So tonight, as we consider his word, I believe that my life and your life will never remain the same. When we know the truth, the truth will set us free. We don't deal with this enemy. There is possibility that this enemy will stop so many from getting into the kingdom. But by the special grace of God, this enemy will not stop you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you go, this enemy goes with you. While you're sleeping, he's sleeping. You're walking, he's walking. Whatever you're doing, there is this enemy within that we carried about, and it's more dangerous tonight. Jesus will grant us victory over this enemy in Jesus' name. So 
We're going to read Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And it says to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to us, said to all. He wasn't speaking to some certain people, some specific people. What he says to one, he says to all. He said to them all, if any man, no matter who you are, the position you have attained, made up his or mind to follow the master. The master says, on this earth, and take up his cross and follow him. Indeed, many are following. Many have picked up their cross and they are following. But before you can pick up the cross and follow, there is a condition. And what is the condition? Let him deny himself before you can pick up the cross and begin to follow a life that is pleasing unto God, the life that is acceptable unto him, the life that God will open the gate of heaven to come in, depends on this phrase. If truly we are preparing for eternity, we must pay attention to this phrase that says, let him deny himself. That self is the enemy within. No one can do it but you. Jesus said we should deny ourselves. It's not saying we should withdraw some certain things from self. He said deny it entirely. It's not saying withdraw some certain fruits of self. Withdraw it, he said, deny it and pick up the cross and follow him. In other words, Jesus is saying, forget yourself. Something you forget, you no longer remember. Renounce yourself. Disregard Mr. Self himself that is in you. Wherever you go, this self wants to go with you. And this Mr. Self has made it difficult for many to please God. And Jesus is saying, this is how you are going to deal with it. Not Jesus gives you to deal with that enemy within. He's saying, renounce it. Disregard it. It means a conscious rejection of self. Refusing to acknowledge your personality. Lose the sight of what you think you are. Forget it entirely. If truly you want to follow him, and follow him himself within has made it difficult for many to follow truly. Many are discouraged because they don't know how to deal with this enemy that is within. By the end of this meeting tonight, you will have victory over that enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. It means spirituality. When you think about your spirituality, sometimes God is speaking. You just come to this conclusion, I know it already. I don't, I don't need this. Stand spiritually. Jesus is saying, if you're going to follow me, pick up your cross on daily basis, the next instruction I'm giving you tomorrow might be different from the one that I've given you before. So forget completely your spirituality. Forget completely your achievement. As a matter of fact, forget how old you are. So that when a little boy appears to you and begins to speak to you, you don't consider your age. Do you know my experience, what I've achieved? Why are you addressing me? Why are you trying to correct me? Forget about who you are, your age, your status, your position. He said, deny it. Don't identify with anything 
that God has given you, he has made you to be. And these are the things, these are the means by which this old man within operates. When we consider the life of Jesus, I want you to turn your Bible with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. What a great example that Jesus has laid down to us. He came to practice it and then gave us the instruction. I did it while I was here. And I want you to practice the same thing. In Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Who being in form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, but made himself, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Who, being in form of God, he taught it not robbery to be equal with God. God himself, living in the midst of men, he taught it not robbery, and the Bible says, but made himself. God did not make him of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. And tonight, the Lord is saying to you and I, if you truly want to walk in this path, this old man must be crucified. You have to evaluate this old man in you and make yourself forget about your personality, forget about what you have achieved, forget about whatever you have attained in life. Jesus made himself. The Almighty God did not make him. He decided within himself, I'm equal with God. But I'm going to make myself of no reputation. The Bible said he took upon himself the form of a servant. No man plays it on him. He did it himself. And he was made in the likeness of men. If you remember the story of Jesus Christ in John chapter 13, verse 4 to 10. John chapter 13. Verse 4 to 10, Jesus called upon his disciples and he began to wash the feet of his disciples and used to well to clean their feet one after the other. He made himself of no reputation, despite the fact that Jesus is God. He washed the feet of his disciples. What do you think could have happened to Jesus to bring himself so low to wash the most dirty parts of our body, the feet of the man? Is the master, is the savior, the creator? What do you think made him to act in such a way? Jesus must have forgotten himself. He must have forgotten himself that it, the glory, what God made him to be, the position he has attained before coming, he kept it away from his memory in order to fulfill the counsel of God in the land of the living. And in order for you to forget yourself tonight in this worldly system, to ignore your personality, to ignore that which we promote. That's one of the reasons why there are misunderstandings everywhere, why there are quarrels right in the fellowship, misunderstanding in the family, wherever we find ourselves, even claiming to be Christians. The reason 
why there is no peace is because of this enemy within. So if you're going to forget yourself, according to the standard of the scripture in this present worldly system, where self-consciousness is the rule of the game. We are very conscious of ourselves. We protect ourselves, protect our image, protect what we have achieved, the position that has been given to us. How can you talk to a coordinator like that? Have you forgotten I'm your coordinator? Who made you a coordinator? God Almighty. He left his glory and humble himself. So you must, if you're going to deny yourself in this present system where self-consciousness is the rule of the day, you must allow yourself to be cheated. You must allow yourself to be relegated to nothing, to nothing. That was the example that the master showed to us. You must give up your rights and stop claiming your rights, no matter who you are dealing with. No matter how great the person might be, how little they might be, wherever you find yourself, if you truly want to run this race and run it successfully, because this enemy within, Mr. Self, will rob so many of the kingdom of God. That's the reason why someone will insult you. You can't keep quiet. You will fight back. It's my right. The very moment we came to Jesus Christ, we hand over our right unto him. He's a righteous judge, the one that defends our right. No matter who you are dealing with, either you are dealing with your husband, you are dealing with your wife, you are dealing with brethren, you are dealing with your pastor, you are dealing with coordinators, you are dealing with people in the fellowship, stop fighting for your rights. Stop claiming your rights. You no longer have any right. If Jesus was to claim his right as the savior of the world, guess what he would have done? He would have refused to go to the cross for any man. He made himself. And you must determine within yourself and say, from this moment, I have found the key to eternity. I will humble myself and make myself of no reputation and let God begin to fight the battle of my, my life. Now, when you look at the life of Jesus Christ, study him very well. Christ never used his authority to show off or to score some points for himself. To let the people know, this is who I am. You cannot ridicule me. You cannot have your way with me. I must always have my way. I'm the savior. Have you forgotten I was sent on a mission to save you all? I can decide not to save you if I choose to. No, that was not the savior that we are following. But now consider men, me and you, of low authority. Every authority we have tonight was given to us. The knowledge you have tonight given to you by God. All the resources you can boast of given to you. Now if you think you're very pretty tonight, God made you beautiful. And if you think you're handsome, God made it. There is nothing that you have tonight that was not given to you by God himself. We men, high in you, of low authority, when we are provoked as servants of God, as children of God, we will ask God, God, back me up. Let them know truly I'm a child of God. Lord, prove it. We will raise all kinds of prayer points. If they will not let me out my way, Father, let your fire begin to consume them. If you pay proper attention, God never answers such prayers because he's interested in every soul. 
that no man will perish. Moses pleaded with God against Koram, Datan, and Abiram, and the ground opened and consumed them. But when you consider the life of Jesus Christ, the example we are to follow, we are to become like him when you consider his life. Jesus, our Savior, he emptied himself entirely. He emptied himself of all his glory. But here I am. I want to wear all the glory. And I want everybody to see. You want everybody to see. And so when they say anything to you, you are ready to defend yourself. You are ready to prove your rights. No man should take me for granted. Guess what? Is the old man that want to send you to where you don't want to go that is manifesting in your life. If you truly want to follow Jesus to eternity, we must study him and understand him. He emptied himself of his glory. Instead of being equal with God, he made himself. This is the position I'm going to take. If I don't take this, this position, it is impossible for me to please my Savior. Jesus emptied himself of all his rights when he came here, living in our midst as an example. Have you forgotten they call him Beelzebub? They called him a gluton. Why are your disciples not fasting? He meets up with tax collectors. They call them companions with tax collectors. Why are you relating with? They call them all kind of name. Is put his right by the side, rather than calling God. Said God, strike these people. Let them know that you sent me. Must they insult me in this way? Father, strike them rather than doing that. You know what Jesus did? He pleaded for them. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. And this enemy within, if you don't understand how to undo this enemy, wherever you go is going with you. If it's quiet for some time, it will rise again. I'm still here. The old man, you must crucify that old man. You must bring that old man under subjection of the word of God. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. We are reading verse 23. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 23. First Peter chapter 2, verse 23. The Bible says, says, when who when he was reviled, revived not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but commit himself to him that judges righteously. That's the savior we're following. I was able to deal with this old man with him. When he was revived, he revived not again. When he suffered, they persecute him. He was insulted. I don't know anyone that is saying anything around you, ridiculing you, making jest of you. They laugh at you, take you for granted treat you as nobody, keep on saying, yes, sir, yes, man. Very soon they will realize you're serving the living God. When he suffered, he threatened us. He did not threaten the people and said, if you continue this, I will paralyze you. I will blind you. He did not. But the Bible said he commit himself to the judge that judge righteously, and who is that judge? 
The God we are serving is not a blind God that cannot see. Once you gave your right to him, is a righteous judge. Is the one that defends us. Stop defending yourself. When they say things that are wrong, keep quiet. And that is why people, that's the way people begin to see that truly Christ dwells in you. Many of us count it as weakness. It's not weakness, it's power. That is why all power in heaven and earth has been given to him. How did he attain that power? The power to live righteously is available if you will control and crucify that self, the dictate of that enemy within that you easily yield onto. You cannot control that enemy. If you yield to God Almighty, the enemy within will submit. Jesus Christ commit his right to the righteous judge. Tonight, the old man, Mr. Flesh, that want to destroy your destiny, the Lord, we destroy that old man in the name of Jesus. Amen. The power to overcome that old man will start from today. Amen. Those who know you before, from tonight when they see you, they will know truly a change has taken place. You will surrender your right tonight completely unto the Lord Jesus Christ and he will defend you. You are not weak, that is strength. And that is power. So the old man, Mr. Flesh, is stubborn. He's stubborn. He's rebellious. That old man that is within is untamable. That is why God cannot relate with that old man. The flesh is enmity to God. He cannot respond to the law of the Lord. He cannot obey it. And chastisement cannot change Mr. Flesh. That's why when you find out, maybe you get angry so easily. You find pride manifesting, then you go into fasting. You will lose all the weight you have. Immediately you are coming down from the mountain. The first thing that happened to you is anger. You cannot chastise Mr. Flesh and change Mr. Flesh from rebelling against God or against the will of God. It is impossible. You cannot. Rebellious and stubborn. We're going to look at a case study tonight that will help us to deal with this enemy within. And I'm telling you by the grace of God, if you will follow him, you will overcome this problem. Mm -hmm. Living the life that is pleasing unto God will become an easy thing because you have realized there is an enemy always resisting the way of the Lord. Whatever the Lord is saying, this enemy within cannot obey God's instruction or do the will of God. It will always influence you to do the wrong thing. And all you keep on doing, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I've done it again. Have mercy on me. And God is saying, I am tired of this you must change completely. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 7 to 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 7 to 8, says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, that old man within that rises from time to time 
when no one provoke you, it's quiet. The moment someone correct you or tell you some things, then this old man will rise, very furious, and the people around you are wondering, is this coordinator truly saved? I'm not sure this man is saved. Did you see what he has just done? What he said? He was very furious. We were pleading with him. He wouldn't even listen. Ah, oh, my God. And some of us will start praying, Lord, change this coordinator. The Bible is saying the carnal mind, that old man, that think wrongly, that do things contrary to the will of God, is an enemy of God. So if you allow the oppression of this old man in your life, and there you are, you say, well, we are running the race of heaven. You better hear the voice of the Lord. Heaven is saying, no, you have not started. The beginning of this race, lay down your life. Deny yourself. Denying the voice of this enemy within. This carnality that has taken over your life. Deny it completely. Because the Bible says it is not subject to the law of the Lord. Everything that God is saying. No, he will not listen. It cannot. There is no way he can submit to the law of the Lord. Neither the deed can be, no, the fruit cannot. Now look at verse 8, it says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And that is why anyone that allow this old man to control and dictate, control your decision, has no place with God. The old man, must be crucified. The old man that fights for its rights, my way or no other way, must be crucified. Such men within this old man within cannot please God. And if we don't please God, how do you spend eternity with God? May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Understand this enemy, then you will have victory. The Almighty God is willing to help us every moment, every second, for it's God that worketh in you both to will and to do. You see, when the voice of the Spirit is telling you, keep quiet, this old man is saying, tell them once more. You have to say something or they will take you for granted. They want to destroy your life. Rise up now and fire back. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, keep quiet. Let me fight for you. You ask the Spirit of the Lord, I'm tired of waiting for you. It's six months I've been praying. You have done nothing. It's been 10 years. Do you know the reason why the Lord has not done anything? It's because of this old man that is in control and in charge of your life who has become an enemy of God, automatically makes you an enemy of God. Jesus dealt with this old man within. Him himself made himself of no reputation. That's why the Bible says, it is the meek that God will teach his way. It is the meek that God will guide. Please turn your Bible with me to Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21, and let us look at the case of this young man. Deuteronomy chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 18. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. You will run and run successfully in Jesus' name. Because God has given us the ability and understanding how to overcome this enemy. 
the enemy outside you can easily shut the door against them you can plead the blood of jesus you can surround yourself with fire but this one within most time is the one that opened the doors for the one outside to keep on destroying things deuteronomy chapter 21 we're reading verse 18 to 23 deuteronomy chapter 21 Verse 18 to 23. Amen. Says, If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, what does that sound like? Sounds like the characteristics of the old man that is within you, within me within everyone created by God. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, the old man within us does not obey God. God is our father. God is speaking and you are not responding. All the voice of his mother and that when they are chasing him, we not hearken unto them. The old man, chastisement does not change this old man. Some of us have fasted for 100 days, 70 days. And after you finish the fasting, two days later on, this old man will rise up again and tell you, I'm still here. Life is not changing. Characters are not changing. The same man that you have been since the day you surrender. That's the same person you are till this moment. That's why people around you cannot see changes. Why? This old man is within, traveling with you. You go to work, is there. You are sleeping, is there. You wake up, is there. You must learn how to bring this old man under subjection, or else this race is a difficult race. And after some time, guess what will happen? You'll be frustrated. You're likely to join the people that say, well, it is not possible. I've tried all my best. Understand the will of the Lord. You will know it is possible. Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city, unto the gates of his palace. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. Is a gluten and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stone that he die. This is exactly the manifestation of the man that is within us. <laughs> This son in this scripture is stubborn and rebellious. He delights in insisting in his own way. Every correction that comes from the parents, he will never yield to it. I'm a human being. God understand. No. He will insist in his own way. His habits are so hardened. It cannot be broken. It's a drunkard. He's committed to some certain things and habits that he will not let go. God is saying, let go of these habits. He will say, no. God, I'm waiting for you to come and help me. God said, I've empowered you. You should deal with your old man and let this habit leave immediately. Every correction, this son will never yield to correction. 
He has made up his mind. And that's the manifestation of this old man in our life. But look at verse 19. The Bible says, Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gates of his place. The father and the mother shall lay hold on him. To do what? They have tried everything. No results. They called him, they cancel him. No result. It's just like you're hearing the word of God. God is appealing to you every moment and every second. When you hear, then you go back again and say, Lord, I'm back again. I'm waiting for you to do this. They cancel this boy. He will not listen. He has become a problem in the society. That problem around you is because of the old man within. That is why you are trying to solve the problem by all means necessary. The problem is becoming so difficult. You don't even know what to do. Listen, pay attention to this old man, this stubborn son, rebellious son that is within, that insists in his own way and not the way of the father, the parents, not the way of God Almighty. And so the parents came to a conclusion because that is the way to deal with this old man. They tried everything. There was no any other option. And that is the rule of the land. The father and the mother were left with the option of death. This son must die. And that's the verdict of heaven. If you will continue to allow this old man to rule your life, rule your family, rule everything around you. Some of us, even some of us that are men, don't you know I'm the head of this family? Ah, who made you the head? Have you also realized that that woman in the house is the daughter of God? And to us that are women, And if you want to take and say, well, this man, I'm going to deal with him. Yes, take his head and begin to walk on his head. One day, his father in heaven will ask you, did I make you the head? Can't you let your right go and let me fight for you? The only option that is left with this family is to bring out their son. Do you know how painful it is? Being pregnant for nine months. I mean, a, a son that has become a drunkard, he's not three years old, might have been living for some years. Do you think the parents would be so happy to bring out this child and say, you know what? We are tired of this boy. The Lord says we should bring him out to the elders to crucify him. Our son must die. That is the same instruction that God is giving to you and I. The same instruction that Jesus came to declare unto us, crucify this old man. Make this old man of no reputation. Forget him. Let him go completely. And so here lies the wisdom of God in dealing with our rebellious, stubborn, insubordinate son called Mr. Flesh. They brought him out. No one could do it. As rebellious as that son happened to be, nobody in the community can drag him, drag him out and say, this boy, you are so stubborn, you are rebellious. We are going to deal with you. They can arrest him. They can complain and criticize him. But no one in the community can drag him to the elders. It was his parents himself that brought him and said, we are tired of this boy. And until you come to that point and be fed up with this enemy within and said, if I don't get rid of this enemy, 
this enemy will get rid of me. Nothing will happen. Brethren, every one of us, including me tonight, I'm the owner, I can, I'm the owner of myself, you are the owner of yourself. You are the one that can deal with this enemy within you. If I choose to deal with it tonight, you will accuse me. You say, well, this brother is accusing us. As a matter of fact, if you are not careful, that old man might be speaking now. Speaking. Of sex already. No one, your husband cannot deal with that old man inside you. You have to deal with it. You cannot deal with the old man inside your husband. That's why heads are, and we are knocking our heads in fellowship. Wherever you go, people are fighting in fellowship. And you don't do it for any man. You don't even point finger to it. I know it's the flesh that is, no, 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 no. It is that person himself. Because it was the parents of this child that took him and said, listen, we are fed up. The elders are waiting for you. And the moment they brought this son to the elders, what did they do? They brought a stone and said, this son, the parents are true with him. The community is true with him. In other words, everyone is saying, every man that will not control this old man within himself, everyone is saying, I'm true. We cannot open the gate of heaven for rebellious people. Stubborn people, insubordinate people. No, we cannot. Everyone that will come into this kingdom must humble themselves. They must deal with this old man within. So brethren, tonight, you are the owner of yourself. The sole responsibility lies on you. You are the one that wants to go to heaven. You are the one to lay hold on your flesh, not someone else. If someone else lay hold on that flesh tonight, it will amount to accusation and you will fight back. So please, don't point your finger to any man. Consider your own self. Consider the enemy within you. Take your eyes from the enemy within other people. You cannot handle it for any man. You cannot solve it for any man. No one did it for Jesus Christ. Him himself, he made himself of no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant in the likeness of men. But then he is God. He left everything. And God is saying, I want you to practice the same thing for God. Get whatever you are, whatever I've made you, whatever you think you are, forget it. Renounce it. Disregard it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You see, the, this old man within, this Mr. Flesh within, <laughs> if my wife choose to scrutinize me tonight, <laughs> he will rise up. He hates correction. He hates personal scrutiny. Uh, sister, what you have done is not right. Bro, we shouldn't do this thing with it. What, what do you mean? I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. And the next moment you start speaking in tongues. You start singing. Simple correction you will not accept. Element of pride. God does not deal with proud people. He deals with the humble. So this old man, the flesh, within, the enemy within, he hates personal scrutiny. He enjoys analyzing. He can, call, he can look at the life of Brother John and analyze his life. What this brother is doing. This is not the will of God. I don't think this brother can make it to heaven rather than sitting down and evaluating his own self. He enjoyed criticizing others. 
he will sit down and criticize and criticize and blame other people for everything that he can lay his hands upon. But he will never allow you to criticize him. If you blame him, he will rise up and defend himself. And those who don't understand, they join hands with him. This Mr. Flesh within, rather than evaluating himself, he loves to find fault, fault finding in the life of other people. Very quick to pick errors in the life of other people. But the error in his own life is not considering that. He can even go ahead and begin to intercede for other people. Let's pray for that brother. Hey, Kapasaka, this brother, if we don't pray for him, he might lose heaven. We don't want any of our brother to lose heaven. Listen, leave the brother alone and consider your own life. Why you are able to see all the errors, one complain after the other. It is this old man within that wants to send you to the wrong place that is manifesting. When people scrutinize you, humble yourself, accept correction, and say, thank you, man, thank you, sir. Do something about it. They love you so much, that's why they are correcting you. They found something. Evaluate yourself and find out, is this old man within? I hope he's not trying to raise up his head again. I will bring you under subjection. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometime, this Mr. Flesh, this old man, can offer to remove the speck in the eyes of his brother, in the eyes of other people. Sister, wait, I found something in your eyes. Let me remove it for you. I want you to turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. The same Jesus speaking to us again. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 3 to 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 to 7. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 to 7. And why beholdest thou the mood that is in thy brother's eyes? But consider it not the beam that is in thy own eyes. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mood out of thy own eyes, and behold, a beam is in thy own eyes. Thou hypocrites. First cast out the beam out of thy own eyes. And then shall thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eyes. Give not that which is holy unto dog, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and wrench you. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible is saying, why are you so worried about other people? You are so concerned. You can easily detect what is going on in their own life. And you have not made up your mind to evaluate your own life. How can you give to people what you don't have? Why are you worried about the speck in your friend's eye, in your brother's eyes, in your leader's eyes, in your follower's eyes? The Bible says when you have a log in your own eyes, the speck you refuse to deal with in your own life, 
you allowed it. Those specs started building and building and building and we not deal with it. Now it has now become a very big law that in you from even seeing clearly. A man that can see clearly, almost blind, trying to correct some come. Let me show you the way. How will you find the way yourself? And Jesus said, how can you say to your brother, let me help you and get rid of the speck in your eyes when you cannot see the log that is in your eyes? And he concluded this and said, hypocrites. What is he saying? There is no room for such people in the kingdom of God. People that pretend to be what they are not. You pretend to be right, and God is saying, you are not right with me. You can be right with men, but with me, you are not. But Lord, why am I not right with you? The man in you, the voice of that enemy, Within you, the old man, that voice is higher than my voice. Whatever I say to you, you don't pay attention. You yield to that voice. And he said, hypocrites. Now, because God is so merciful, he's revealing this to us and said, quickly. He said, first, first is the first thing. It's not saying don't pay attention to that. It's a first and foremost, before you will make any step to correct anyone, to help other people, it's a first and foremost, I want you to get rid of the log in your own eyes. That shortcoming in your own life, that old man that has taken over your life, the power of flesh, he said, I want you to deal with it. Practice it in your environment, in your house, in your office, in the fellowship, wherever you go. Every opportunity you have to live a life that is pleasing unto God. They said, I want you to do that. Then you will see clearly. Your life will even become a testimony that attracts other people into the kingdom of God. He said, then you'll be able to speak to your brother and say, brother, come. I've discovered how to deal with this enemy within. This is the way. I saw some things in you. Let me help you. And even as you're helping the brother, the brother will know quite all right that indeed the Lord has helped you. The secret of the kingdom on how to deal with this old man. That is frustrating us. We want to live righteously. We want to please God. And we're wondering, why are we struggling? We're up and down. It is this enemy within by the special grace of God tonight, you yourself will crucify this enemy within. You will deny yourself completely. You will forget who you are. When people insult you, it looks as if nothing has happened. They want to take your right. They want to take your position. Yes, you can have it. The one that gave you that position will fight for you. He will defend you. The Bible said when Jesus suffered, he threatened not. In every area you have threatened people because of one thing or the other. They want to change you. They want to do this. And you started going to tell God, Lord, I'm so sorry. I never knew it was my flesh that was in operation. I'm so sorry, Lord. My right? I give it to you from this moment. See, this enemy within the same sin that self we judge, self we've been indulged in in the secret place, that same thing is doing it in the secret place. This old man within, he will condemn other people that are doing the same thing. In the secret place, he's doing it. He will come out openly and he will condemn others. Rather than confessing and said, I'm just like those people. I'm struggling too. He said, you see the, what these people are doing? They're not ready to follow Jesus, but in the secret place, he's doing the same thing. That's what this self, this old man can do. So you must make up your mind. You must be willing to lay hold on it. 
laid hold on your flesh, on yourself, and crucify the flesh yourself. Tell him to keep quiet. You are not in charge in this place. Don't wait for anyone. Anyone else cannot do it for you. They can't. Nobody. You have to do it yourself. Even the Almighty God is not promising I'm going to do it for you. He would have done it for a long time. He showed you the way. You want to follow me? There's something that will stop you from following me. It's inside you. It will tell you this suffering is too much. Why don't you turn back? It will tell you don't take that insult anymore. That's why you see believers jumping from one place to the other because the flesh is still alive. In the fellowship is one thing after the other. The flesh is alive. And he's saying, if you will follow me, you must let go of this old man that has been in control of your life before now. I want to take control of your life from this very moment. In other words, God is saying, let the mirror of the word of God reflect your life to you. As you pick up the Bible to read, read it for yourself, not for anyone. Is the mirror through which we can see ourselves and begin to adjust our lives? What is the essence of gathering tonight? And we're not going to practice what God is teaching us. We're going, we're coming, there is no change, no transform life. The heart still remain the same. Characters and habits still remain the same. No. We must consider the mirror of the world that reflects our life. The true image that God is expecting from every one of us and abide by it. Tonight, by the special grace of God as we're rounding up tonight, please don't apply this message to any man. Did you hear that? Don't apply this message to the one that is, I think God is speaking to my wife tonight. Don't do that. I wish my husband could hear, don't do that. Do you know the man in operation again? Is that same old man. Rather than considering your life tonight, you are looking at someone else. I think this is for so-so person. This is for, no, don't do that. This message is for me. This message is for you. It's not for someone else. It's not for your neighbor. It's not for your siblings. It's for you. That enemy within. And by the time they realize that the enemy within you is under subjection, they will copy your way of life. And that is strength from above. Those are the people that God fight for. God will defend them. So if you apply this message to someone else, is the cleverness of the flesh once again. He loves to point his finger to other people. No. Anytime you're pointing one finger to people out there, the rest fingers are pointing onto you. We must evaluate our lives and come to this conclusion. Is this old man still in operation in my life? Lord, help me. Show me what to do in Jesus name. May the Lord bless us tonight in Jesus name. At this time, we will lift up our voice and uh, we're going to thank God for the word of life tonight. When Jesus began to speak to his people, when they hear the word, they said, Lord, what shall we do? What do we need to do? We go to God and say, Father, show me. These areas of my life will stop me. Help me, Lord, in this area. So I want us to lift up our voice tonight and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for this privilege and this opportunity tonight that God has given unto us. Just bless his holy name. Bless him. Bless him. In the name of Jesus. 
thank him, thank him for this opportunity, this privilege that has given unto us. You can unmute your mic and let's pray now. And after the prayer, if we have any question, we will look into it. And begin to bless you. By you, there is no one like you. You are the King of Glory, the Lord of Hosts, the one that changeth not. Let's bless Him, magnify Him. But I thank you for the Word of Life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me the true way how to deal with this enemy within. Every one of us, we have it. It's there until you bring it under control, under subjection. Until you meet that old man of no reputation. This old man within does not and magnify you. Thank you for opening my eyes tonight. Thank you for this understanding tonight. I've been struggling for a long time, searching for this solution. But I thank you tonight for the key that you have given unto me tonight. I bless your holy name. Magnify you and exalt you, Lord. There is no one like you. You are worthy to be praised. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified. Glory and honor unto your holy name. Lord, I worship you, Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Thank you for the word of life. The word is true in you, Lord. Thank you for this truth tonight that we set free. I will transform our lives. We bless you. We magnify you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The one we are following is a good example for every one of us. Christ emptied himself. And until we get to that point, we are not ready yet. And my prayer is that it will not be late for any one of us. I will start crying, Lord, I'm not ready. And Lord, I'm not ready. No. We want to serve God. You're willing. You love him. But get this understanding. We must empty ourselves. If we are filled up, God, there's no space for God to fill us anymore. He does not relate to such people. You can call him. You can be thousands of people calling him. He will tell you, I'm not coming. I'm not in your midst. Because you will not do what I say. The change is not taking place. You are still the same person, the same thing. I keep on coming. I, 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 so we're going to pray tonight and cry. Lord, give me wisdom to empty myself. Mm. Wisdom to empty myself. This self will kill me. Mm. If I don't kill this self tonight, it will kill me. Mm. That's why your, us, your wife will call you and say, Darling, I want to advise you. He said, Please don't tell me that nonsense. Don't tell me. Don't, I don't want to hear you. Keep quiet now. And they are trying to advise you. You have just made something wrong. They want to help you. Now you are upset. You are still lying. Is the old man. You are living in deception. Is the old man. And heaven is taking record. You are going to pray tonight. The wisdom from above. To empty myself. Lord, grant unto me tonight in the name of Jesus. Shall we go ahead and pray? Let's turn to God. There is a wisdom from heaven. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. 
He's the word of God. Open to into myself. I am full of myself, O oh Lord. I am struggling in this area. Lord, give me tonight. Help me, Lord. No one can do it for me. God himself cannot do it for me, O oh Lord. I have discovered a secret. I have been praying to you all this time. God, take this away from me. God said, no. I have empowered you to get rid of it. Empowered you through my war. I make myself a woman. I make you my right. He says, Drop your right. Grace to empty myself. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the grant unto me tonight, in the name of Jesus, grant me this grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will pray tonight. Jesus said, Deny yourself. Then the next thing he said, Pick up the cross and follow me. You cannot jump these procedures. The moment, remember when Jesus, Peter was rebuking Jesus. You will not die now. You will not go to the cross. You will not. You cannot go. If you go, what will happen to us? What do you think was operating in the life of Peter at that moment? Selfishness. Huh? God bless you. God bless you. Selfish what? Selfishness. What did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. That selfishness will stop me and you from responding to the will of God. That's why you are upset when God will come to correct you. Amen. You want to pray tonight. Lord, this self-centeredness, if Christ was self-centered, you think he would die for me? No. Will he die for you? No. No. You will cry tonight and say, Father, this selfishness, I am separated from you tonight. I have determined within myself by the grace of God, you will no longer ruin my life. Mm. I'm going Stop practicing self selflessness around people, people around you. Practice it. Exercise the muscle. Selflessness every moment. Before you consider yourself, consider others. The goodness you're expecting for yourself, expect it for someone else. You want your wife to respect you tonight. Go and honor her. Even if she talks to you, it talks to you anyhow. Wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, man. How are you, man? Thank you, man. Bible says, Whatever you want others to do to you, do it unto them. Practice with everything within you, then you are preparing for heaven. Let's get to our person and say, Lord, the grace to separate myself from this selfishness within me, this self centeredness within me. Lord, tonight, I receive grace to deny myself of mm. myself in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray unto God. Let's pray unto him. Why well, focus on me alone? It has to be me or no one else. No, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let me free from this self-centeredness. Let me free from the power of self within me that want to stop me. This enemy that want to block my way. This enemy that is struggling with me. Eternity away from me in the name of Jesus. Manifest in the name of Jesus. Separate me. 
When Jesus suffered, the Bible said, threaten not. And sometimes you will think that your suffering will come from afar off. It could be within. It did not act as if he recognized what they were doing. What was the secret? He laid everything in the hand of God. The Bible said, he, when he suffered, he threatened not. He commit himself unto what the righteous judge. Our God in heaven is the righteous judge. Before God will judge anything, he will consider the motive behind everything and come to this conclusion. He does not come to support anyone. He comes to show the right paths. When God judge, it's not judge you are right, you are no, no, it should, this is the right way. And everybody will look at it. You will find yourself there. And you will pray tonight that Lord, the grace to surrender to you, either is good or bad, handle it for me, Lord. Mm. Handle it. Because even what you're going through, you don't know the reason why that person came to insult you. Maybe it's just to prove you, to show the level at which you have grown in the Lord. If God can place you and give you a greater promotion and bless you, mm. and there you are. The moment they insult you, say, woman, you are insulting me. These people that are insulting me in this fellowship, Father, show them some mark. Deflate their tires. Let, them, let their engine knock so that they can know you have truly called me. Is that the spirit of Christ? Hand it over. You will pray tonight. Every circumstances that come in my life from today, Lord, agrees to surrender it to you. To take charge of every situation of my life. Many a time we surrender, we go back to Jesus, I'm going to handle it myself. I will handle it. You have handled it for 20 years. There's no change. Can't you change your way? Surrender, Lord, tonight, every situation in my life, I relinquish it unto you. My right, I surrender it back unto you. You be the righteous judge of my life in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, every situation, every circumstances, no matter what you're passing through right now, surrender it completely unto the Lord. And say, Father, I want you to take it over. God, I know you're a righteous judge. I depend on you. I know you will be me in this situation, oh Lord. Maybe you have been accused of things you have not done. They are saying all kinds of things. Relinquish it and say, Father, I want you to take absolute control. That was exactly what Jesus did. Rather than waiting for himself, he relinquished everything unto the Father, knowing that the Father is a righteous judge. Let the righteous just take absolute control of your life and my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, the grace to surrender every situation that comes into my life. Whatever I will go through from now, oh Lord, I am going to surrender to you. Knowing, oh Lord, you will handle it perfectly, much as you like to do it. 
Manifest Manifest in Jesus' name we pray. You know, when Jesus is speaking, I love him so much, he will always tell you the truth. If you want to hear the truth, go to our Savior. By the time he finishes with you, you will know indeed he's the Savior. Amen. We're going to pray tonight. You're going to, maybe if you don't want to pray, you can pray for me. Adventure, there is log in my eyes, and I'm trying to remove the speck in someone's eyes. Mm. Jesus said, You are an hypocrite. Mm. You are what? Hypocrite. You are an hypocrite. So you will pray for yourself tonight. The log in my eyes, Father, help me to remove it. Remember, no one will remove it for you. So if you are praying, Jesus, uh, remove this, remove this log in my eye. You have prayed that prayer for 20 years. That log is still there. He has given you the grace. You will determine within yourself. This log in my eye, I'm not seeing clearly. You see, the mirror of the world will show you how blind you are. As you look into the world, you will find yourself there. You will discover there are logs somewhere here. And some of us maybe speck, remove it tonight and say, Father, I receive grace to remove the log in my eyes. If that log is not removed, Jesus has declared such people. I pray you are not part of those people. Not you. He has declared those people as hypocrites. Why? They pretend they are following, but he said, you are not following me because you have not denied yourself. No one can follow me without denying themselves. That's the rules. So you will cry tonight, Lord, every log in my eyes, I receive grace to remove it myself. In the name of Jesus, shall we go ahead and pray? So that you can see clearly. You can see clearly to remove the speck in the eyes of other people. And if the Lord will open your eyes tonight, you will discover there are big logs covering your view, covering your sight. Why you cannot see clearly. Father, everything that represents log in the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. By your grace, Lord, I receive grace and remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. I will move this log from my eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. In my eyes, in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that represents law, why I cannot see clearly in the name of Jesus Christ, by the measure of God tonight, as we will completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all tonight. Is there any question? Now, if there's no prayer uh, question, I want us to pray this one more prayer point by the grace of God. You are going to pray. See, the spirit of God is inside you. But the voice of that spirit must become louder so that you can hear it clearly. Amen. Mm. You are going to pray tonight that you will be sensitive to the leading of the spirit. Amen. See, no man can live holy except God will assist him. Oh, Jesus, yes. No man can obey him except he help you. Mm. And he helped you by speaking. No mm. man will hear what he's saying to you, but you alone. Mm. Mm. You're going back home. You want to quarrel. Before you get to me, say, get some candy, put it in your mouth. Whatever your husband says, just keep quiet. Rather than listening to what the voice of the Lord says to you, before the man will speak two, three words, you just throw the candy away. You give him some <laughs> Amen. 
after the seven, you say, Lord, have mercy. Go back to fellowship. Please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. The Spirit inside you that is telling you, call that brother now and tell him you are sorry. You will not do it until seven days later. Mm. It is the help, divine help from above that help us, the Spirit of the living God. When it mm. comes, it will convict you of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. He begins to help you and to guide you on how to walk this narrow path. So mm. tonight you are going to pray, and I want you to pray seriously. Now, mm. Father, help me to be sensitive oh, to the Jesus. of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let this voice of the Holy Spirit be magnified in my life. It will mm. sound like a loud speaker. Mm. And silence the voice of the flesh that is telling you to do the wrong thing. Shall we go ahead and pray? Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, Je Oh Seigneur, mon Christian Seigneur, Seigneur, en ma vie, en Alléluia. Alléluia. ta voix. manifeste dans ma vie. Que toute voix, que toute parole, que toute voix étrangère se lève à ta main. Au nom de Dieu. Amen. Alléluia. This race is a wonderful race. A beautiful race. It's an easy race. When we discover the way of the Lord, mm. the burden will be lifted up. Mm. God begins to guide you. We find the secret. You're going to lift up your voice now and let's thank Him for revealing Himself to us once again. Amen. Thank God, you. I thank you for this great privilege. I thank you for victory over this enemy with you and me. Over this man of flesh that want to ruin my destiny. I thank you for victory. Tonight, O Lord, praise to prepare Merci ta connaissance, ta sagesse dans ma vie, Seigneur. Merci, Père, de ta présence. Oh, Alléluia. Pour la gloire, la gloire, la gloire, la gloire, la Merci, Seigneur. Alléluia. Oh, Jésus. Alléluia. Merci, Seigneur. Merci, Seigneur. Alléluia. Glory and honor unto your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name. The body of our praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Your word is be thou exalted. Be the magnified. We are grateful for all that you have done tonight. 
For what we continue to do in our midst, the blessing of the Holy Name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Brother Buddy. Do we have Brother Buddy on, on the line? It's all line. Okay, please, Brother Buddy, please pray for us and send us home. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the message that we have listened to tonight. We thank you for your word that you have ministered to us tonight about the old man, the vision of the old man. Father, we pray that we will not just be hearer of your word, but that we will give ourselves wholly to all that we have heard tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. Paul said, Far be ye that I glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I am crucified to the world, and the world has been crucified unto me. Amen. Father, we pray by the power of the cross tonight that every old man that is still alive in us mm. crucify it now in the name of mm. Jesus. Amen. 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 Crucify with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but mm. Christ that lives in me. Mm. The life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm-hmm. Lord, I said that I've had your word tonight. I said that you have ministered to tonight. Daddy, as Paul has testified, we too we shall testify. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus, that we are crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, we are alive, but not us anymore that is living. Mm. But Christ that is living in us. Amen. And the light that is living by the faith of the Son of God, Amen. who gave himself for us and died for us. So, so shall be our testimony tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now all Christ will be living in us. Amen. And people will not see us again, but they will Amen. see us. In every of our attitude, they will see Jesus. Amen. In our character, in our relationship, in our behavior, at work, at home, in the church, it is Jesus and Jesus alone they will see. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We worship your name. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Shall we share the grace? With the grace yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Yes, and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives. And we should dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. God bless you all. Shalom. Hello. Thank you. God bless you. Shalom. God bless you. Good night. Good bless you. Good night. 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 Good